Arab states went to war with the Israelis after this. This is a big moment. 4 p.m. Rothschild Boulevard, David Ben-Gurion officially declaring Israel an independent state. The Jews finally have a home. His talk is pretty nationalistic and very thoughtful. He stresses on points like the state of Israel would strive to develop the land for the good of all its residents, be based upon foundations of liberty, justice, and peace, and that Israel would ensure social and political rights to all citizens without discrimination of religion, race, or sex. But did any of that happen? See, Palestine after World War I was under British control and was seeing a series of violent outbreaks between the Arabs and Jews. And to resolve that, the UN proposed a partition plan which would divide the land into two states, Jewish Israel and Arab Palestine, while keeping Jerusalem a UN-controlled international zone. The votes came in. 33 countries approved, 13 countries voted against it, while 10 completely abstained from voting. And although the Arab states walked out as a form of protest, the partition plan was adopted. On the ground, tensions were high, and they continued to escalate with the massacre at Deir Yassin. This started the mass exodus of Palestinians, while Jewish immigration, which was encouraged by the Zionists, was on the rise. The Arabs were becoming increasingly frustrated. As the atrocities kept growing and with the promise of an independent Arab state nowhere in sight, Israel officially declaring its independence triggered a tipping point. Arab forces from Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq marched to Palestine. This was the first time the Arab League was formed. And for what? To protect Arab Palestine. To put it into context, the Arab states had just recently declared their own independence from colonial powers, so Arab nationalism was on the rise. And although Arab leaders agreed on the importance of forming a unified Palestinian state, their interests came first. Fawaz Gerges, a professor of international relations, mentioned this about the Egyptian and Jordanian kings that they appeared to be more concerned about their respective strategic positions than that of Israel. And according to historian Avi Shlam, the conflict between the Jews and Arabs allowed for the emergence of special relations between the Zionists and Abdullah, who wanted to secure his plans to expand the borders of his country. Nevertheless, the armies of the Arab League launched an attack, and in just a few weeks, Israeli forces were surrounded, facing a possible defeat. That's when the UN intervened with a four-week ceasefire, which worked in favor of Israel. Ignoring the UN arms embargo, Israel imported heavy armaments from Czechoslovakia and used the time to reorganize. This brings us to a turning point in the history of the war. As soon as the ceasefire was over, Israel launched a counter-offensive, occupying two strategic Arab towns which were allocated to Arab Palestine by the UN. 70,000 Palestinians who lived there were forced to flee. The Israelis closed in and continued occupying the areas allocated to the Palestinians. And the Arab armies were not as effective as they were in the first round of fighting. There was little coordination and virtually no cooperation, says Avishlam. The Arab states who were led by Egypt responded by announcing the establishment of a Gaza-based Palestinian government. But this was more of a strategic move by King Farouk to prevent King Abdullah's ambitions to expand his borders. Israel watched the Arab feud, all the while consolidating its own position. It began singling out Egyptian forces with an aerial campaign. Egypt appealed to its Arab allies for help, but its appeals fell on deaf ears. And Avishlam says that the Arab states were either afraid to intervene or did not wish to intervene. By the end of the year, the Egyptians were defeated in Gaza and could no longer support the dream of a unified Palestinian homeland. Desperate, Egypt turned to Britain for help to preserve its territorial integrity. An armistice was signed with Israel and the other Arab states followed suit and signed separate bilateral agreements with Israel, who now was controlling 78% of the entire territory. This brings us to the end of the war. 
what did the first Arab-Israeli war bring? An Egyptian military presence in the Gaza Strip, and Jordan was gifted the West Bank as a token for its loyalty to Britain and the Zionists. Meanwhile, 700,000 Palestinians were driven out of their homeland. And the UN's two-state solution? Well, it never saw the light of day. It's been 70 years. The crisis of this catastrophe continues. Thank you.